Welcome to the Jarrett Bay Insider. I'm your host, RV Hodge, and today we have a really hot topic to cover. We are in the engine room of the 84 foot Jarrett Bay hull number 60. This boat has engines that are in excess of 2,000 horsepower each. It takes a lot of fuel and a lot of air to make that much horsepower, and getting the exhaust out of the boat without setting everything on fire is pretty important. So, there are a couple of ways that this is done, and what we call a conventional exhaust, at least conventional in the sport fishing boats, is the exhaust comes up into a riser, and then it is shot out of the hull at the water level, and we call that conventional exhaust. What we're going to talk about today is the next level, and that is the underwater exhaust. As the engine runs, it's burning fuel and air, making exhaust, that expands. It comes into a steel sleeve here, a stainless steel sleeve really, and then it has this insulation over it. This exhaust comes up into the riser, it has water injected into it. That's done because the exhaust coming out of a diesel engine is around 1200 degrees. Obviously that's going to burn everything up. The water cools it off, it goes into this fiberglass box, we call it the exhaust box or sometimes we call it the dog box. In that box there's a little more water injected in, all the excess water from the motor gets injected into that box and then that transitions down into a channel that is built into the side of the boat. You can't see it after the boat's done, it's invisible everywhere else. So all of the stuff that is in the mystery zone is less magic and more engineering and we're going to go take a look at that in another boat where it's in process. We are now in the engine room of hull 65, which is a 64 footer. Obviously this engine room is a long way away from the one we just left. The engine will be here, the risers, the salon floor will come across here, so it'll all be crowded right into here, but um, essentially the same place. There will be a box built right here, the, what I call the, the collector box or the dog box. This is where that exhaust and water mixture goes into and it begins to exit to the back of the boat. If you can imagine, if you will, the boat starting to move and inertia is running that water, pulling the exhaust and creating somewhat of a Venturi effect at the back end. The exhaust passes from the engine room through the pump room. In the pump room, we generally have a generator mounted on top of the exhaust port. There's a lot of other things around it. The exhaust leaves the pump room, goes under the fuel tank zone, and it travels back into what is the lazarette, or what will be the lazarette, and it goes into a little expansion chamber, and that chamber is designed to funnel and shoot the exhaust and water out the bottom of the boat. The conventional exhaust would exit straight out the transom at the water line, hence the more noise. Another added advantage, and as you saw coming through the fuel tank zone here, this is much lower, and this gives us a little bit of extra fuel, maybe a couple hundred gallons, but a couple hundred gallons is a big difference when you're offshore. So our water line will be somewhere around here, and as you can see, our exhaust is coming out well below water level. That's what makes it so nice and quiet, and that's the end of the exhaust for us. We're standing behind Viking hull number one, a 76 footer, and we're gonna talk real quick about some service work on the running gear. One of the things that is unique to every boat is the propeller size, the pitch. There's a little bit of twist and tweak into every boat to get the exact optimal performance. One thing that is the same on every boat is the running gear is underwater most of the time and there's a lot of sea life down there that likes to grow on it, corrode it up, and that erodes the performance of a boat. It erodes the lifespan of your propeller. It takes more horsepower to twist those around. You lose fuel economy. Here you can see this propeller has a coating on it that is designed to keep that growth from building up. It will try to attach. As soon as that propeller starts moving, water starts flowing across it, that stuff will wash off. Obviously, everything has a shelf life, but that is just as important as the bottom paint for the longevity and performance of a boat. Thank you for tuning in to the Jarrett Bay Insider. We have some really special topics to cover in the future. We'll look forward to seeing you then.